subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm yeshi jonzo Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday the 29th of September. Heavy rain batters eastern India cripples normal life. US senator seek sanctions on Taliban probe on role of Pakistan in aiding group. And Residents in Afghan capital face water shortage economic challenges. And now for all the details. Incessant rains in eastern India led to water logging in Kolkata and West Midnapur cities on Wednesday, posing problems to commuters and local residents. Heavy rains triggered by cyclonic circulation over Bay of Bengal have lashed several districts of West Bengal state since Sunday night, inundating large parts of Kolkata city. People on Wednesday were seen walking in cough deep waters on flooded roads that restricted traffic in the cities. The IMD India Meteorological Department has issued a red alert for very heavy rains in some districts of South Bengal as cyclonic storm Gulab is likely to reach the West Bengal coast. It has also predicted extremely heavy rainfall at isolated places in Saurashtra and Kutch regions due to the influence of cyclone Gulab. Meanwhile, The Indian Coast Guard on Wednesday raised warnings for fishermen to return to harbor amid reports of cyclonic buildup in the Arabian Sea. The Coast Guard headquarters in Western Gujarat's Port Bandar and stations has been put on high alert and on standby as the IMD warned that cyclone Gulab could re-intensify as cyclone Shaheen in the next 24 hours. A group of US senators have introduced a legislation to impose sanctions on the Taliban. and also sought a report from the secretary of state about his assessment of the role of pakistan in supporting the islamist group over the years meanwhile top pentagon officials told congress that the afghan army's sudden collapse caught them off guard as they acknowledged miscalculations in america's longest war A group of 22 Republican senators led by Jim Rist on Tuesday introduced a legislation to impose sanctions on the Taliban government in Afghanistan and also on the foreign governments that support it, seeking a report from US Secretary of State Antony Blinken about his assessment of the role of Pakistan in supporting the Taliban from 2001 to 2020. It is believed Pakistan enjoys considerable influence with the Taliban and the legislation also seeks to look into reports of Islamabad's support for Taliban offensive against Afghan resistance in Panjshir Valley. Meanwhile, US Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin told Congress on Tuesday that the Afghan army's sudden collapse caught the Pentagon off guard as he acknowledged miscalculations in America's longest war. Top US General Mark Milley also said the United States missed warning signs about the coming failure of leadership and will in its Afghan allies that ultimately led to their collapse and Kabul's takeover on August 15. We helped build a state, Mr. Chairman, but we could not forge a nation. The fact that the Afghan army that we and our partners trained simply melted away in many cases without firing a shot took us all by surprise and it would be dishonest to claim otherwise we need to consider some uncomfortable truths that we didn't fully comprehend the depth of corruption and poor leadership in the senior ranks the hearing follows similar questionings 2 weeks ago that saw us secretary of state antony blinken staunchly defending president joe biden's administration even as he faced calls for his resignation a news from afghanistan after decades of conflict climate change and poor water management residents in afghan capital kabul have been facing a dire water shortage and authorities are worried the city could literally dry up They have complained life is getting harder and harder as a looming economic crisis has also added to their worries. 
After decades of conflict, climate change and poor water management, Afghanistan's capital Kabul is facing a dire water shortage, which has authorities worried. Dozens of people, mostly children, could be seen waiting to fill up containers with water from a well at a local mosque in Kabul earlier this week. Hamdullah Nomani, Kabul's mayor, has said there is concern that the city could literally dry up and the government is planning to speak to companies that supply drinking water to solve the shortage. According to USAID, just 42% of Afghans have access to safe drinking water and around 27% of the rural population have access to sanitation facilities. According to WFP, the World Food Programme, if access to water is not taken seriously, the likelihood of a vast famine will increase with the passing of time. Meanwhile, Kabul residents have also complained that life is getting harder and harder due to rising prices and lack of jobs following the Taliban takeover. Freighters who carry goods from one place to another in the capital said on Wednesday there was less or almost no work due to lack of traders. The United Nations has said basic services are unraveling in Afghanistan amid the economic crisis. As foreign aid has dried up amid Western distrust of the Taliban. Moving on, rising unemployment and inflation have continued to raise worries of locals in Pakistan-administered Kashmir. Daily wage laborers in the illegally occupied regions say they are facing trouble in finding work amid the pandemic and it has become difficult to survive as prices of most commodities have skyrocketed. Rising unemployment and inflation have become a cause of worry for migrant daily wage laborers in Pakistan administered Kashmir who are facing trouble finding work amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Hailing mostly from parts of Muzaffarabad and Malakand districts, the labourers have demanded the government to look upon the thousands of people migrating to cities for job opportunities but are still left unemployed and hopeless. They said prices of all essential commodities have reached an all-time high due to inefficient government policies and it has become hard for them to survive. <laughs> Meanwhile, President of Opposition, PMLN Party, Shahbaz Sharif this week lashed out at Prime Minister Imran Khan-led Pakistan government over a proposed 35% hike in gas prices following a recent hike in fuel prices. He said it will be another foolish act and termed it unjustified as the country already has the highest inflation rate and lowest income in the world. In news from Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan authorities have eased restrictions for visitors who have had their COVID-19 vaccine amid a fall in the number of new daily cases. No PCR test on arrival will be needed for fully vaccinated domestic and foreign passengers from 1st of October, if found negative at point of departure. Amid a fall in the number of new daily coronavirus cases and vaccine rollout that has reached nearly 55% of the population, Sri Lanka's Health Ministry on Tuesday announced new guidelines for domestic and foreign passengers. Fully vaccinated domestic and foreign passengers from October 1 having a negative PCR test result at the point of embarkation will no longer need to get the test on arrival at airports effective from Tuesday midnight. Foreign visitors who have not been fully vaccinated will be given the opportunity to visit their hotel in a bio bubble and a PCR test will be done there. Passengers arriving in the country have to take a PCR test 72 hours before departure at present. Meanwhile, the island nation is planning to end the nationwide lockdown on October 1 
as the health authorities feel the current COVID-19 situation in the country has improved and is conducive to lift the curfew. Sri Lankan government imposed a nationwide lockdown on August 20 and extended it thrice. Sri Lanka has so far reported over 12,786 COVID-19 deaths, while the total number of cases as on Wednesday stood at 515,524. A three-day-long festival aiming to promote tourism in India's Jammu and Kashmir attracted scores of visitors this week. The event witnessed a colourful cultural extravaganza as it highlighted the rich traditional handicraft products and folk culture of the Kashmir Valley. A three-day-long festival organised to promote tourism in Srinagar city of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory concluded on Wednesday. Themed the Paradise Fest, Our Kashmir, the event witnessed a colourful cultural extravaganza as it highlighted the rich cultural handicraft products and folk traditions of the valley. Various entrepreneurs, educational and training institutes from the valley participated in the festival which was organised as part of celebrations of World Tourism Day. Locals said events like these do not just promote the tourism of the valley but are also a time to relieve the stressful life. ये बहुत अच्छा स्टेप है क्योंकि इससे पीपल जो डिप्रेशन्स ऑल दैट में होते हैं वो उससे बाहर आते हैं तो ये हमारे लिए बहुत अच्छा स्टेप है इंजीनियर ने भी उठाया है ये बहुत अच्छी बात है यहाँ पे कश्मीर का जो टैलेंट है वो भी शो होता है मुझे बचपन से कश्मीर का बहुत क्रेज था मुझे कश्मीर बहुत अच्छा लगता है और यहाँ पे आके आपको सुकून मिलता है यहाँ के लोग बहुत अच्छे हैं और ऐसी जगह पे अगर फेस्टिवल हो रहा है और बहुत लाइक लोगों को अपॉर्चुनिटीज मिल रही है आगे जाने की सो आई थिंक दिस इज द बेस्ट थिंग वी हैव एवर कम अक्रॉस जम्मू एंड कश्मीर इज कंसिडर्ड वन ऑफ द मोस्ट पॉपुलर टूरिस्ट डेस्टिनेशन इन इंडिया टूरिज्म इज द मेन स्टे ऑफ द सीनिक वैलीज इकोनॉमी as many locals depend on it for their handloom, handicraft and tourism related businesses. The Nyingma school is the oldest of the schools of Tibetan Buddhism. Young Buddhist monks including those from Bhutan and Nepal are getting Buddhist teachings in India's northern Shimla city to carry their lineage and school forward. To carry forward the teachings of the Nyingma school of Tibetan Buddhism, Young monks are getting education to become masters in Buddhist practices after a degree course of nine years at the Dorji Drug Monastery in India's northern Shimla city. Most of these monks, also called Lamas, are from Himalayan region of Nepal, Bhutan, Himachal Pradesh and also the Tibetan Buddhist in exile. These students were seen chanting Buddhist verses and memorizing scriptures. They are also learning science, mathematics, computer science and English to gain an overall knowledge of the contemporary world. In the 21st century, we all know what we are saying. That's why we are also monks of Buddhism. In this century, we should go to this century. That's why we are computer, Abhiga, Technology, online through the uh, English, Shingnagale, Shingne, Yellow Sub, uh, both important here. Me, I have a Buddhism go. But I need to get a master practice me. Or me, I have a teen salsi practice karo. Or you know, the me, I have a teen salsi practice karo. Or I have a bad kind of get a. Dorji Drug Monastery is the main school of the Nyingma School of Tibetan Buddhism. The Nyingma School is one of the important sects out of the four main schools, including Sakya, Kagyu, and Geluk of Tibetan Buddhism. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Heavy rain batters Eastern India cripples normal life. U.S. Senators seek sanctions on Taliban, probe on role of Pakistan in aiding group. And residents in Afghan capital face water shortage economic challenges. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Asianewsline and follow us on Twitter at Asianewsline. 
That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.